Sometimes we're just not in the mood to entertain guests. At least most of the time, you know who they are and when they're gonna show up though. But imagine finding out that someone's been in your home without you even knowing it. Those are the stories we're talking about today. Any of you ever had a horrifying experience like this? Do share in the comments. I'm your host James, and these are the top 10 evil people that were caught living in someone's house. First, we have Theodore Edward Conies. Uh, we hear a lot of contemporary stories of folks hiding in people's homes, but this incident happened way back in 1941. This is the case of Theodore Conies, who secretly inhabited a man's attic before finally committing a horrifying crime. Conies, a, a vagrant and drifter, sought refuge in the home of Philip Peters, an unsuspecting Denver resident, concealing himself within the confines of Peters' attic. Conies led a precarious existence, surviving by scavenging food from the kitchen and sneaking out at night while Peters slept. However, what began as this eerie invasion of privacy soon escalated to a pretty big tragedy. Driven by desperation and fear of discovery, Coney's mental state began to deteriorate and, and convinced that Peters had become aware of his presence, Coney's hatched a chilling plan to eliminate threat. On a fateful day in March of 1941, he descended from the attic and confronted Peters in his own home by the kitchen, overpowered by a surge of primal aggression. Coney's viciously attacked Peters, ultimately taking his life in a brutal act. All right, next off we have the ex. Uh, ever have that ex-partner who just won't seem to go away? Well, this case took things to a whole new level when Tracy from South Carolina actually found her ex-boyfriend living in her attic 12 years after they had broken up. She had seen nails popping out of her attic and heard noises. At first she thought there was a poltergeist in her attic and I'm guessing when she found out the truth, she probably wished it were a paranormal entity rather than her ex-boyfriend from over a decade ago, yikes. Her sons and nephew found the man in the back of the attic and he booked it out of there before the police arrived. Now what makes this extra creepy is that the guy had been doing his business up there. There were a bunch of large cups from the fast food restaurant Sonic, all filled with that yellow and brown stuff that comes out of all of our bodies. Surprised, uh, nobody noticed that the second floor of their home must have started smelling like a, like a public bathroom. To make matters even worse, this uh, heartbroken ex-lover also rigged the ceiling vents above Tracy's room in order to spy on her. Nothing, you know, nothing screams romantic like spying on your ex while taking a poop in their ceiling. Number eight, we have the scammer. Catherine Lang, a 75-year-old resident of Beaufort, South Carolina, had an unsuspected encounter when she visited her newly purchased home. To her astonishment, she discovered a 22-year-old Tigra Shepherd inside the house. Hi, what a name, love that name. Accompanied by a friend and her pets, Lang had brought the property back in October of the previous year, but had yet to move in. Her intention that day was to check the pipes after returning from vacation. It turned out that Shepard had been under the impression that she was legally renting the house. She had recently signed what she believed to be a legitimate lease, which was sent to her by an unnamed woman who claimed to be a realtor on Facebook. Shepard had sent her $1,150 as her first month's rent and deposit. The scammer had assured her that she would receive the keys eventually, but suggested that she could access the house through the back door to begin moving in. Upon discovering each other, uh, both Lang and Shepard contacted the police to report the incident. Uh, now, Look, the girl who got scammed, Tigra Shepard, certainly not evil, right? But the scammer, shame on her, whoever she is. Also, never mess with someone named Tigra. She'll call the Thundercats on you. Miguel Lua, back in December, 2010, an anonymous woman residing in Modesto, California began experiencing a series of bizarre events within her own home. Growing increasingly concerned, she strongly suspected that her ex-boyfriend, a 27-year-old man named Miguel Lua, was somehow involved. Fueled by suspicion, she believed that Lua had unlawfully entered her residence. One fateful night, as the woman plugged in her cell phone to charge it overnight, she later discovered it had vanished. 
Disturbed by this occurrence, she promptly contacted the authorities and they initiated a thorough search of her house. To their surprise, the investigation led them to the attic where they stumbled upon Lua, cunningly concealed beneath layers of insulation. It seemed he had been lurking there for quite some time, spying on his ex-girlfriend. The missing cell phone, as it turned out, had been taken by, it was Lua, he took it, shocker, in an attempt to monitor her communications and verify if she was in contact with other dudes. Consequently, Lua's actions led to his arrest, revealing that this wasn't the first offense of trespassing into an ex-girlfriend's home without consent. In fact, just a few months prior, in July of 2010, he had been apprehended for a similar crime involving another former partner who had previously obtained two restraining orders against him. It's scary to imagine what he would have done if he uh, found something he didn't like on that phone. Number six, the Attic Man. Back in 2008, the Ference family in Pennsylvania began experiencing peculiar occurrences in their house just days before Christmas. Initially, Stacy Ference attributed the strange sounds to their cats or one of her three children. However, on Christmas Day, their suspicions grew and several items went missing on two separate occasions. Once in the afternoon and then again in the evening, it became evident that someone had broken into their home twice targeting their Christmas presents, but it wasn't the Grinch. Concerned, the family promptly contacted the police to report the incidents. The following day, an intriguing discovery unfolded as his footprints were found in one of the bedroom closets leading up to the attic. Authorities were alerted and they arrived with a police dog. Together, ventured into the attic where they stumbled upon a 21-year-old Stanley Carter. To everyone's surprise, Carter was wearing Stacy's sweatshirt and sneakers along with her daughter's pants. Not sure how you fit into those, but as the story unfolded, it was revealed that Carter had been staying with neighbors which shared an attic space with the Ference family's home. At number five, we have John M. Dubis. This is a stalker story, not the only one that's gonna show up on this list as we've seen. I guess the two uh, ex-lovers are Kind of stalkerish. Anyway, John M. Dubis was a pretty persistent stalker of Jennifer Lopez. Due to his history of stalking her, Lopez had already obtained an order of protection against the 49 year old man. However, this did not deter Dubis from breaking into the pool house of Lopez's luxurious mansion located in Southampton, New York. On August 8th, 2013, the staff of the house made a startling discovery when they found Dubis on the property. The police were contacted and it was revealed that Dubis had managed to resign within the pool house for an entire week without being noticed. That's tenacity. Despite the presence uh, of those you know, security measures, to make matters even more insane, Dubis had taken pictures all around the property and posted them on Facebook, showcasing uh, you know, his unwelcome presence. Posted all kinds of crazy stuff. He shared receipts that showed he was in JLo's area. He took selfies, wrote that he was married to her. He was just living this whole fantasy life for a week, minus Lopez actually being there. Thankfully, she she was not present at the time. Dubis faced uh, multiple charges, including burglary, criminal contempt, and stalking as a consequence of his actions. All right, in Yelm, Washington, a 73-year-old woman named Velma Kellen found herself puzzled by the unusual occurrences happening around her home. She would often discover her back gate open. She noticed a peculiar uh, smell that resembled cigarette smoke, but had a strange quality to it. As winter arrived, Kellen started noticing problems with the heating and called in a repairman to inspect the ventilation system. During the repairman's investigation beneath the house, everything quickly snapped into place. Covered that someone had been squatting in the crawl space. Not like exercise and squatting, but they had been, you know, living down there. And they'd been utilizing the ventilation system for warmth. This unknown individual had tampered with the vent by cutting it. Inside the crawl space, there were alcohol bottles, and though the exact duration of the squatting situation remains uncertain, it's suspected that the person or persons have been living there for about a year. Under the bed. Late on Wednesday night, a Seattle couple arrived at their apartment only to be confronted with a scene of utter chaos. Lotion was smeared all over the doorknobs, a can of paint had been poured into the toilet, junk mail was torn open, and the soles of numerous pairs of shoes had been removed. The couple immediately contacted the police. Strangely enough, nothing appeared to have been stolen though, leaving the couple puzzled and even considering the possibility of something supernatural 
having occurred. The officers were pretty perplexed, but left after a 45 minute investigation. Later, Brian shifted the bed slightly to retrieve a bracelet from the floor when he suddenly heard an unsettling noise emanating from beneath the mattress, a growling sound. The couple ran out of their home and contacted the police. Once again, officers re-entered the house and came back out accompanied by a disheveled, wide-eyed woman. How they did not check under the bed in that 45-minute investigation uh, makes no sense to me. Anyway, they got her. The O'Neills continued to assess the aftermath, making even more disturbing discoveries, though. They found a hypodermic needle concealed within their bed sheets and locks of the woman's hair scattered throughout the house. And finally, a knife was discovered beneath the bed, a tool she had apparently used in an attempt to dismantle the box springs. At number two, we have the stalker. Carlo Castanellos Feria and Michelle Fredenberg Onion crossed paths while working together at a hospital in Washington, D.C. Carlo, a valet, developed a, an unhealthy obsession with, uh, with Michelle. This obsession eventually led him down a dark path of stalking. At one point, he managed to swipe her keys and make copies of them before returning them unnoticed. Then he entered Michelle's residence and planted a camera on a desk in her bedroom. When she and her boyfriend would arrive at the apartment, Carlo would hide beneath the bed. This alarming charade continued for two whole days until the boyfriend eventually discovered him. Upon apprehension, it was revealed that Carlo had stashed various items under the bed, including con latex gloves, a change of clothes, and a power cord. He was then arrested and a search of his home uncovered even more disturbing stuff. Among the findings were six framed pictures of Michelle, an additional stack of unframed ones, and a video taken uh, from her previous wedding. And coming in at number one, we have the case of Daniel LaPlante. Uh, following a brief dating period with Tina Bowen, 16-year-old Daniel LaPlante gained unauthorized entry into the Bowen home, initiating a series of terrifying events. From a narrow crawl space, he tormented the family by impersonating a ghost of their deceased mother, changed TV channels, he rearranged items, uh, left disturbing messages on the walls. Uh, the situation escalated when he pinned a family photograph to the wall with a knife. On December 8th, 1986, the girls returned home to discover someone had used their toilet, prompting Frank Bowen, the father, to search the house. He found LaPlante driving dressed in a Native American style jacket and ninja mask, armed with a hatchet and forced the family into a bedroom. Tina Bowen managed to escape through a window and alert the police. And two days later, LaPlante was discovered hiding in a triangular space in the cellar where he had been living for weeks. With all that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.